This is what this is what God says. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you. And all my prayers for all of you, you know, in context, we just we just read last week about how this is Paul the Apostle. God has inspired him to write this. So it's really a message from God writing through Paul. But he's he's in a jail cell and he's writing this to the church in Philippi. And he's also writing this to the church here at Mount Pleasant. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you and all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Isn't that what we're doing, children of God? You look on that wall over there, you're looking at people in Bangladesh that have given their lives to Christ. You go up and down the hallways, which Joan, I was going to pick on her this morning, tell her I'm upset that she didn't come this morning. Because I think all the amazing pictures that we've got of the mission work that's being done in our community and around the world in Cambodia and India, where people have come to Christ. That's what, that's what Paul's talking about right here. He says, you have partnered with me in the gospel. We're doing the same thing at Mount Pleasant. Dante is what, God, what Paul was doing. 2,000 years ago in Philippi. He was going into all the known world and telling people about Jesus. That's, that's what the gospel is. The gospel literally means good news. That's what the gospel means. And so Latoya, what that is, is we're sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with the world around us. And he's saying, man, I think, I, I think about you. I remember that. I love that you're being a partner in that, in that goal of getting the gospel out to everybody. He says, being confident of this. Now listen to this in verse 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. So what God is telling us here is the good thing he started in you, Felicia. Your ability to love, your ability to teach, and being an amazing mother, an amazing wife to your husband. The, the ability to do it. He's, he's not done. He's still working. He's got an amazing plan for your life. And he just got started. He wants you to get excited about that. And I can say that about every one of you. Miss Kathy, same with you. He began to work in you. And he's giving you this promise in his word that he'll continue it until he's done. Amen? That's encouraging, isn't it? Because when I look at me, I don't see a finished product. I hope to God not, right? He says in verse 7, he said, It is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart. And whether I am in chains... Or if I'm defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you in the affection of Christ Jesus. Now listen to this. Here we go. We're going to talk about vision. He says, and this is my prayer. This is what God is impressing on Paul to pray for us. He says, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth and insight. So that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. You see, this is what I want most. Rodney, I want you to love more than you've ever loved before. Specifically, I want you to love Jesus more than you've ever loved before. He says, because as you grow in that love, you're going to be able to discern. You're going to be able to see right. Things are going to be able to, they're going to begin to make sense. Because Shane, things get pretty blurry sometimes, don't they? And that's what he's saying is, I want to clarify that vision for you. I want you to understand what your next steps are. Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, God's got to fix your eyes. Yeah. Now, now turn to your other neighbor and say, even though you're my second choice. <laughs> say, God has an awesome plan for your life. Oh, man, that was a weak turn to your neighbor. Come on now. Turn, turn to that neighbor and say it loud and proud. God has an awesome plan for your life. God has an awesome plan for your life. So I'll be your neighbor. That is spirit bump. Can you get there you go. Okay. As our love for Jesus grows, we start seeing, right? Jesus will give us discernment of the ability to see his promises and the process, listen to this, or the steps that we got to take in order to experience his promise in our lives. I want to show this through an illustration, okay? I've, I've got some special people that are going to help me out here. So can we get... Can we get Jesus and Jaheim and LaShawn to come, to come out here? Okay, dude, that, that was a legit entrance, man. The door's open. Okay, Jesus, hang tight right there. Yeah, well, go ahead and come back. Go ahead and come back. But just Jesus for now, okay? All right. Let's give Jesus a hand, man. There's not many people who are brave like this guy. I love him so much. So, so here's Jesus. Now we've got LaShawn. 
And LaShawn is a special young man. I've been loving him for a long time. And you know one of the things that's special about LaShawn is he's not ashamed of his faith. And you know what LaShawn does? LaShawn has invited Jaheim to church because he wants him to meet Jesus. Isn't that cool? Let's give LaShawn a big hand, man. That's the gift, right? Now, the glasses are going to make sense here in just a minute, okay? Now, no mortal man would look that good in those glasses, by the way. Okay? So here's, here's LaShawn, and he, he's wanting to introduce Jaheim to Jesus, right? And he wants, he wants Jaheim to know how much Jesus loves him and that Jesus gave his life for him, right? So as, as he does this and as Jaheim begins to fall in love with Jesus, he gives his life to him. He says, man, you know what? Jesus, if you were willing to give your life for me, I'll give my life for you, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that awesome? So in return, Jesus, now that he's got this love thing going on with Jesus, man, all of a sudden... Something amazing is happening. He's beginning to see things a little differently than what he used to. So I'm going to ask my angels to come up. Can you, can, can you guys come up here? You guys? Yes. Uh, what, what are you able to see? Let's, let's, let's park you right here. Is that okay? Can you guys line up right here? So one of the things that God has for every one of us is a plan. Did you guys know that? Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Everybody raise your hand. <coughs> That's who he has a plan for. Every one of you. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you, bless you. Plans to give you peace. And he has, so he has this individual plan for each of your lives. And each in, in my life, too. The problem is, guys, is if, if we're not in a loving relationship with Jesus... We kind of don't know how to experience that plan. And so, you know, I'm going to give you this and you get into my time. Okay? So one of the things that, that, that Jesus is going to do, he's going to work with Jaheim and begin to show him how to experience that plan in his life. And give him, give him three So you can see that it was real murky. That's good. Man. Okay. Can you give him a little bit of a Now, all of a sudden, this is becoming clear. Let's see what this says. Go to church. So you know what? Jesus has given him clarity on what the next step is. He said, look, man, at church, I've got this cool dude named Zach that's a new youth pastor at Mount Pleasant who loves you with all your heart, man. He wants to keep you on the straight here. He wants to give you encouragement. He wants to be there for you when you need him, right? He says, hey, man, there's other young people. Man, cool dudes like LaShawn, right, that are coming to this church too that are going to help you. They're going to, that, that, like that old expression, iron sharpens iron, man. He's going to make things better for you, right? So he gave you, he gave him clarity on what his next step is. Then, then he goes to this next one. You give it a little swirl. All of a sudden, oh, there it goes. And what does this one say? Don't go to that party. So let me tell you something that Jesus understands and we don't. He understands what the end is, right? He sees if, if there's a party that Jaheim goes to, if he goes to that party, man, that's the first time he's going to get exposed to methamphetamines. That's the first time he's going to get exposed to dope like that. And he tries it. He knows if he goes, he's going to try it and he's going to like it. And he's going to get addicted to it. And it's going to steal his promises. It's going to steal what God has for him. So because of his relationship with Jesus, Jesus gives him clear vision to say, man, it's not a good idea for me to go to this party. I, I've, got to, I've got to steer clear of this, right? So then Jesus gives him a little more clarity. He gives him the next step. He's really beginning to see right, man. He's seeing all these things that are helping him to get to his ultimate goal, God's promise for his life. Stay away from that crazy girl. <laughs> There's a crazy girl that has got it bad for Johnny. <laughs> and that's the one, that crazy girl, that's the one that wants to get him smoking dope with her because she digs that. She's smoking dope all the time. And he starts smoking dope. And pretty soon he gets busted on a test, on a, on a, on a, on a P test. And he gets kicked off a football team. And he loses his dream of becoming a professional running back for the NFL, right? So then, then it gives us, gives him a little bit more clear. Here's the next step, Johnny. Let me show you. Now that you got your love glasses on, oh, it's becoming clear. 
study hard, practice hard. Jesus is pointing out how important it is to, to dive into dive into your education, really take practice serious, right? Because you know what his ultimate goal is? Here's a cool promise, a cool plan that's just for Jahin. Remember, every one of us has one of these special made for us, right? And as that begins to get clear, he says, I, I want to make provision for your life. I want to give you joy. And I want to help you become an NFL running back. How cool is that? He's pretty excited about that plan, right? Now, now let me ask you guys this, right? Let me ask you guys this. What if, right here, before... Jesus showed him about crazy girl. He took the glasses off. And he says, I, I, I kind of love other things a little bit more than I love Jesus. I, I'm more concerned with what my friends think about me. Whatever, whatever that argument is. And he, and he takes those glasses off. And that's what happens, guys, when we come out of that relationship with Jesus. When we're not staying in that daily loving relationship with Jesus, it makes our vision get blurry again. And all of a sudden... That warning that Jesus was going to give about crazy girl. He misses it. And he falls for crazy girl. And everything goes south. Right? So keep these glasses on. Because God's got a plan for your life. Why don't you give Jesus a big hug? Huh? Good job, angels. Give these angels a big hand. Too. Flamethrowers on it, 
But uh, so, thank you. Mitch, Mitch is big. I, I got one other person that understands my deepness. So it also shoots Captain America shields out in front of it. This is not just any old cycle, okay? So I, I saw this at the store and I was like, dude, I, I wanna I wanna get this, man. I, who wouldn't spurge? Who would not want a Captain America super cycle that shoots out Captain America shield? Besides not okay, there's two people that would, we're gonna pray for them after the service is over. <laughs> So, so I buy it, man, and I'm so excited, and, and, I, and I, I get it home, and, and what's in the box is not the super cycle, or at least not like that. It's a bunch of pieces. What's up with that, Josh? You know, it was just... Just like, just like what I experienced in my, in my, in my marriage. You know, I, I had the privilege of, of going, of doing marriage counseling. Desi and Desi and Justin got married last night. It was beautiful. And, and last week we got to, we got to take them through marriage counseling. And, and as I was going through that marriage counseling, God really shared a glimpse of what my marriage kind of looked like. Kind of, kind of in reverse. I got to see how God put things together. You know, one of the first things he did as he began to give me an awesome marriage in pieces, he, he reminded me of this piece that I, I had to learn not to get my wife flowers. That was an important piece to that, that marriage looking good. And then he, the piece where, so my wife hates flowers, by the way. That's, that was a I don't hate that. flowers. Okay, so we're like, I don't know what it is, but I, I, do I get in trouble if I bring you flowers? Yeah. Okay, so that's a piece that I got right, okay? And then here's the piece of us going on a mission together. And then, and then teaching together our commitment to church. Putting the toilet paper in the dispenser in a certain way. It's a big deal for marriage, by the way. This piece right here is a two week two weekends that she spent by my side in the hospital just recently. This piece is when I chose not to pursue relationships with other women. That's a big one. That's a big piece. Sir. <laughs> this one is all the times that I wanted to twist off. Because I didn't get my way, but I didn't. This one. Well, these are all the times that she's had to forgive me. <laughs> but you see, when I, when I was going through that marriage counseling, and I, I was looking at a couple who was staring down at, 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 at the image God was giving them of their marriage, and the promise, and the, and the potential, right? And, and they were kind of seeing what, what their super bike would look like. And I was, I was able to look back, I was like, you know what, man? I haven't got the super shields yet, but I got a super body. When I look at what God has done with my marriage now, because of all these pieces, chains start to come together. Amen? But it's a piece at a time. And that's the way God's process works, right? It's, it's a piece at a time, and as we honor Him and we do the right things, the pieces begin to come together. Now, this is for the men out there. There may be a few women that I need to talk to about this, but there is an instruction manual in this Lego box. Oh. Now, now, my son is, is, is slightly superhuman, and he might be able to put it together to some degree without reading the instructions. Just hold it up for a minute. Okay? Now, if we didn't follow that, there's no telling what the super bike would look like. Poor Captain America would probably have the bike on his head. This is our instruction box. Amen. This is what we follow to put the pieces together. This is how we end up with the super bike. Amen? Amen? And if we don't follow the instruction, guys, it doesn't come together. Everybody turn to your neighbor and say, follow the instructions. Follow the instructions. Hope you're not picking on the same neighbor <laughs> Can 
You guys, I want to give you another example. It's really one of the best examples of this. Is God, is God teaches us the process of experiencing His promises. Through seeing right and through putting those pieces together one at a time as he teaches us to. If you guys go to Romans chapter 4, I want to show you something amazing that happened to somebody who trusted God, who put the pieces together. And even though things looked impossible, just like my marriage looked impossible, God blessed him in ways that's just mind-blowing. It's in Romans chapter 4, and we're going to be looking at verses 16 through 21. So again, this is a guy that, his name was Abram. And this guy loved God, and he was willing to do anything God said. God told him to get up and move, and he moved. God, 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 everything God told him to do, he did it. And he let God know that he loved him. And hang, hang tight there for me, Abram. Hang tight there. No, you're good. You're good right there, brother. Everybody give Abram a big hand. Now, one of the things that God did that was unique for Abram, because Abram had always wanted a child. And Abram, of course, was pretty old at this time. And God told him, as a result of his honoring to God, God told him, he says, you know what, Abram? I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Now, Abram, when you look at Abram, do you see a, a guy that's ripe and be right ready to have lots of kids? Be the father of many nations? You know, Gary, that's what a lot of us suffer from. God gave him a promise and he looked at himself. He looked at where he was at in life. He looked at his age. He looked at his abilities. He looked at where he was at currently. And told me it looked impossible. And what God did is he proved that none of that matters when he gives a promise. The only thing that matters, God, is our obedience and our love for him. And he will overcome the impossible. And I love this example. Again, 99 years old. His name was Abram. Follow me here at Romans chapter 4 as we learn a little bit more about what God did here. Verses 16 through 21. <clears throat> Therefore the promises come by faith, so that it might be by grace and be guaranteed to all of Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are the law, but to those who have faith in Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. And he is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. Again, in whom he believed. There's, there's a lot into that. We don't have time to go into that. But Abraham, it was well, his name at that time was Abram, had demonstrated his love by the fact that he was willing to be obedient and do the things God asked him to do. The God who gives life to the dead and calls, who listen to this, and calls into being things that were not. I don't want to go into this again, but just like he called into being an orphanage in India this time last year that was not. And now he has 200 children living in it that are being cared for. Amen? Verse 18, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said about him, so shall your offspring be without weak. Listen, to me. listen, guys. In verse nineteen, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. So, take it again. God's given him this promise, and he's looking in the mirror. And even though he said his body was as good as dead, he was ninety-nine years old. He still believed because of his love, because of, of that love that made him be able to see clearly, right, that God's promises aren't dependent on our shortcomings. They're dependent on our love and our willingness to follow his process. Since uh, that his body was as good as this, since he was about 100 years old, and that his wife Sarah, her womb was also dead. She was 90 years old. Yet he did not waver Though through unbelief regarding the promises of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully, I better say fully. fully. Listen to this, guys. Being fully persuaded that God has the power to do what he had promised. We hear that same, it just echo what we read in Philippians chapter 1, that God will continue the work he's done to you until he's done. Did I say that right? Sort of. You guys are just picking up what I'm feeling now. Okay. But it's the same thing. Abram experienced it in his life. 
So what I'm trying to show you, Eric, is that when God tells us he means it and, it, and, it's, and it's a fact, and we've got proof of it right here with Abraham. We've got proof of it and what he's done in my marriage. He said, that is why it was accredited to him as righteousness. So guys, I want you to understand. Can I, can I get Jesus coming out? <laughs> so Abram falls in love with God. Can you give, give him a big hug? Give him a big hug. There's that love. So, so now, because of that, he gets a brand new pair of glasses. He puts his love glasses on. And so God tells Abram, he says, look, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. The whole nation of Israel, guys, that's where it came from, is this relationship right here. The whole, the, even in Jesus' genealogy, it came from this relationship right here. The fact that Abram was willing to love Jesus enough to, to do what he said to do, to overcome the shortcomings, his age, his ability, the obvious things that would keep him from doing what God was telling him to do in his life. He overcame those things through some love glasses and willingness to do. And so, so he believes it. And you know one of the cool things, and I, I encourage you guys, read Genesis chapter 17. We don't have time to go into that this morning. But do a little research on this and, and read about the whole thing about Abraham, dude. It's legit. So one of the things that God did is he says, you know what? I'm going to change your name. That's how he put the glasses on for silly. He gave him new glasses. He says, I want you to see yourself different. His name used to be Abram. He says, I'm changing your name to Abraham. How many of you guys have ever sung that song? Father Abraham had many sons. You guys ever do that yet? So that's where that came from. He says, I'm going to change your name to Abraham. The word Abraham means the father of of many. He says, I want you to start seeing yourself different. I want you to start seeing yourself through the eyes or through the lens of my love and what I'm going to do for you. So he became Abraham. So now Abraham's pretty, he's pretty stoked about this promise even though he's still 99 years old. Jesus didn't put him in reverse. Literally, you see him? Yeah, he got to be younger. Okay? So, so Abraham, says, Abraham says, okay, man, I believe you, Jesus. So he calls Sarah. He calls Sarah. Standing up, standing up for the. Standing up. You all right? She's she got to be able to see what's going on. Trying to figure out. She can't figure out what's going on. I think he got an infection. <laughs> You're going to have a baby. Woo! Oh, Jeepers! <laughs> Just like Abram did. He put Jesus first. He put God first in his life. And as a result, he experienced promises and provision for his life that were literally miraculous. Mind blowing. Threw Sarah off her feet. And that's what God has for everyone in this room. 
He's got a plan and he's got provision for your life. But you got to love him. You got to love him or else you're going to miss crazy girl. Right? You got to love him or you're going to miss that, that thing that, that's going to that's gonna derail that promise from happening in your life. You got to have those love glasses on so that you can see right. And then, guys, I want you to understand that he'll begin to give you pieces. You know, Jimmy, you had another piece today when you came to church to that awesome life that God has for you. Josh, you added another piece today when you taught that class. As you're adding pieces and you're following the instructions to put them together, that promise and that plan for your life begins to happen. So guys, this morning as the music plays, if you're sitting out there right now and you're thinking, you know what? My vision's been pretty blurry. I don't know what my next steps are. I don't, I don't even know, I don't even know what God can have planned for my life. Shane Jesus is saying, let me fix your vision. Let me fix your vision and show you how much I love you. Let me fix your vision and show you the next steps. Let me clarify it for you. pieces together to build that cross, that special plan I have ready for your life. 